Smile show. Smile show. Smiles, everyone. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Good Friday. Good Friday. Hmm. Good Friday. Okay. I think Caroline, is our. Uh... Yeah. Can you make me a co-host? I can. There you go. Host. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. As always, it takes me a moment to get sharing the screen part isn't hard, but getting the Zoom part of things the way I like it takes a minute. You make that larger? I will. Yeah, just one second. Okay. that better? Maybe even a little more. Sue's in the cheap seat, so I should go. Five inch screen TV. <laughs> okay, I'll, um, might have to reduce this when we get to the lesson so it'll all fit, but is, does that work? Can yep. that? I tried to eliminate, I can do this to eliminate the extraneous space so that, um, we have the most room for the text. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, good morning. 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 For today, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Never forget to show kindness, to share what you have with others. These are the sacrifices which God approves. Which God approves. Could I have a volunteer to read the gospel reflection? I can do that. Susan, great. Me? Oh, okay. Sorry. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You are willing to die for the sheep. You are the good shepherd. As the Father knows you and you know the Father, in the same way you know your sheep and your sheep know you. You are willing to die for us. The Father loves you because you are willing to give your life. No one takes your life from you. You give it up of your own free will. You are the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd who understands our frailty and knows each one of us by name. Someone like to read the epistle reflection? I think, Jan, you were volunteering before. Would you do this one? Sure. When we were still helpless, Christ died for the wicked at the time God chose. One of us might dare to die for someone good, but now we see God's love. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe into the kingdom of his dear son by whom we are set free and our sins are forgiven. So we rejoice in the hope we have of sharing in God's glory. By the Holy Spirit, God has poured into our hearts the love of Christ. Thank you. Returning to the Old Testament or the First Testament, um, there's a lesson today from Numbers. And uh, let's... Let's read it and then um, then I'll reduce it enough that it'll fit on the screen. Could I have a volunteer to read this passage? I can do that. That would be great, Bob. Thank you. The Israelites, the whole congregation came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month and the people stayed in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and against Aaron. People quarreled with Moses and said, would that we had died when your kindred died before the Lord. Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness for us and our livestock to die here? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to bring us to this wretched place? It is no place for or grain, or figs, or vines, or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. 
Then Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and your brother Aaron, and command the rock before their eyes to yield its water. Thus you shall bring water out of the rock for them. Thus you shall provide drink for the congregation and their livestock. So Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he had commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Listen, you rebels, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me to show your, my holiness before the eyes of the Israelites, therefore you shall not bring this assembly to the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Mirabah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord and by which he showed his holiness. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> So we can almost get it on the screen here. Ah, <laughs> I finally calibrated hand motions on me on my part. I think we can mostly see it. Is this satisfactory? Yeah. Okay. Reaction, thoughts, response? Well, I was just thinking, you know, they didn't have any food or water. I, I tend to get a little grumpy myself. I can understand why they'd be quarreling with Moses. It's hard to, to have that much trust when you're, you don't have food or water. Right. And why did it take so long for them to get the food and water? You know, why, why didn't that come a little earlier? But if we look back over the tail of this migration uh, before this, there have been several opportunities or, or several occasions where they did complain and, and God always responded and Fill their needs. We need to tune their sound down slightly. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little uh, disappointed with them at this point. That they don't have faith that he's going to get them through this whole ordeal. But I have to say that I, I've always sort of thought that uh, God's displeasure with Moses at the end there is a bit contrived. God just told Moses to take the rod and go out and uh, you know, tell them tell the, and try to bring forth water uh, from the rod. Well, Moses did that, but he hit the rock with the rod. Uh, and that seems to be what uh, God is uh, bringing up there, that uh, he didn't, Moses didn't do what God told him to do. Oh. That's what I was taught. But the issue was more that he hit the rock twice instead of just once. But um, either way, it's an awfully, it, it, the small lack of trust, if that's what it is, out of a lifetime of service to God, it's like, ooh. Yeah. I can imagine Moses being like, was frustrated also. <laughs> yeah. He's taking all the heat from everybody, isn't he? And then you know. to know that after all this hardship, they're not going to see the land that the Lord had given them. Betsy, I think that's, that's I have the hardest time with that. Um, you know, that, that he had led the people out and, and that his brother, you know, that between the two of them, they, they were together and um, trying to care for this whole huge community 
and then ultimately they're not going to be able to pass through. Right. Um, that just doesn't seem fair. I didn't read beyond this passage this morning. Um, <laughs> just now reading the sentence, my, initially I re reacted the same way that, wait, well, they've been journeying all this time and they're not going to get to the land. But I wonder if this sentence could be read that Moses and Aaron are not going to bring them into the land. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't say that the people aren't going to get them. But either yeah. way, it's, it's, either way, it's frustrating. No, it's, it's definitely directed at Moses. It's not directed yeah. at Moses. If I was Moses, I would not tell the people. Like after this, I'd just be like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a long way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is taking a long time. <laughs> like, Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I, think mother I, have Moses. I would have wanted to be the one reading this group. Mm-hmm. Okay, you guys, I looked up the meaning of Meribah. It means quarreling. It's a girl's name of Hebrew, Hebrew origin, meaning quarreling. Hmm. Yeah, quarrel or skirmish. Yeah. Thank you, Connie. That was helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I think the story is also told in Deuteronomy. That mm -hmm. or Exodus. Um, this, this, Exodus. Yeah. yeah, this story occurred towards the end of the time in the wilderness. This is about the 38th year. And however, it parallels what was happening in the beginning of the time of exile. That's all that language that's familiar to us. Mm -hmm. For me, at least, I think was from the first time. What do you mean, God? Where are we going? And, and there's, and, and what? There's no water. This is horrible. And just looking at not even the, the specific complaints, just how I at least resemble all of this, where if something's different or if something changes or if I'm someplace, someplace or some circumstance unfamiliar, I'm going to find something to complain about. <laughs> just, like, well, this, this came up yesterday in, um, we were talking about this quarantine and how people are getting a little antsy at home and having bickering with their family and, you know, how long is this going to last? How do we get along? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, could, I couldn't help but think of the same thing. I mean, you look at, the, yeah, this went on for 40 years for the Israelites, and it's like, uh, I'd be uh, doing a lot of complaining, too. I, this is not, you know, what the heck's going on? And you look at what's going on in our world today and say, wow, we made it one month without really quarreling and griping and complaining and whining and all this stuff. And um, you know, what have we to learn today uh, from this story? Um, it's a big challenge. And we, have, uh, we have what? I think Moses tends to aid and abet the system by saying to them, after knowing that Mo uh, the Lord has given him an out, listen, you rebels. He challenges, he calls them by name, rebels. Shall I bring water out of the rock? It's a question. He knows he can. Just do it. Don't challenge them. I, I love that. Listen, you rebels. <laughs> yeah, why does he do that? Why does he say that to them? Because he's fed up with them. I feel like it's more incendiary. Like he's trying to whip them up even further. <laughs> But maybe that's what maybe that's what upset God. I'm sure it did. Mm. It would. <laughs> you have the answer. Just produce. Well, he was setting. Right. It's not about you, Moses. It's about us. Right. Yeah. right. He was setting himself above everyone. Quite. He and Aaron were clearly the only ones who could bring that water out of the rock. So he right. knew it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> yeah. It was ego. Lots of. Ego. I imagine like him in this big amphitheater. And he's like, listen, you rebels. And then he's like, what? I can't hear you. Like, <laughs> yeah, poor Moses. It's interesting, the beginning of this passage is mentioned in passing, Miriam died there and was buried there. Miriam was their sister. Mm -hmm. And commentary, which I did not find terribly helpful, so I didn't dwell there, but one of, for example, said, well, 
if Miriam was the one that's, that saved Moses, probably she was older. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyhow, the, the part that was a little more serious about it was um, that commentator took from the context that something must have happened to Miriam. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was not as passive as this little mention leads us to believe. Now, I didn't do any further research into that, but that was curious. So maybe they were in grief? Mm. Mm -hmm. And when you're in grief, you feel parched, no water. I think that's a stretch. I think just take the story for what it says. They were, okay. you know, they're, they're in the wilderness. It's hot, it's miserable, there's no water. Um, they've and they've been, been journeying for 38 years. Mm. Yeah. And they're pissed. <laughs> they've moved past grief into piss. <laughs> it happens. Wretched place. No place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates. Mm -hmm. no water. How can we live here? We can't plant. We can't harvest. We can't care for ourselves, feed ourselves. Yeah, I agree with Susan's comment in the beginning. I'd be cranky too. Mm -hmm. Angry, I think is the word. <laughs> it really brings to mind, you know, like the desert being out in where nothing will grow. Mm -hmm. You know, sandy, sandy type wilderness. So were, they were traveling though, right? They were like on their way to... Yeah, I think so. I think they did some traveling during this time. I think they traveled, I, I don't know for sure, but I have to assume over 40 years. They must have had times when they were more or less settled. But at this point, all of them were traveling and they came to this place. It's funny, I just read that in the commentary. Hold on a second. They would follow the fire, wouldn't they? Or the, when the fire appeared, they'd travel? Yeah, do you think they were traveling? And then every time they got to a spot, they waited to see if they were, like, this was the place? That would be even more rough. Every time you come to a new spot, then you wait, and you, you're anticipating, like, that this is the place that God's bringing them to, and then the answer is no, and you have to keep going. Right. That's even worse. All right. Having, um, having failed to enter Canaan from the south, Israel planned to detour through Transjordan in order to attack Canaan from the east. A summary which condenses Israel's long sojourn at Kadesh. The year of the first month is dropped out. The whole generation condemned to wander in the wilderness for about 40 years passed away, and the Mirabah incident is paralleled in Exodus 17, 1 through 7. You know, I think that's, that would be incredibly hard also, because you can't plan. You don't know, right. you know what's happening as far as, like, your children and your children's children. And if this is 40 years, you know, people are getting older. They're, they're maybe concerned about about legacy even. Well, I think it also strikes harder because this is a new generation. Like right. this generation has only known traveling in the wilderness. Right. They don't remember what it was like in Egypt. They don't remember, this is not those people. So to know that God has taken care of them the whole time they've been in the wilderness and they're still calling him out. I think that makes the rub even worse. I think of refugee families coming in and immigrants coming in and, um, mm. and each generation as it changes, you know, and their impressions mm -hmm. of, of life. Even, even military families that move every year or two years or three years mm. don't have some of these hardships. They still have to adjust and adapt and figure out what God is going to do with them in this new place. That was my life growing up. It's unmuted. 
Well, at the same time, military families are pretty darn adaptable. They know my experience in congregations in military areas is that people come new to the congregation and they jump in. Yep. They don't sit back and observe. They know how to make friends fast. Exactly, because they know their time is limited and they know built, being part of the, of the community is important to them. Is that, is that consistent with your experience, Jan? It is. It is. Are, it's exciting to get to a new place mm -hmm. and start fresh. And um, the one thing I, I noticed as time went on was that I didn't really keep up with people I had left. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I had kept up some of those contacts. We were always looking forward to the next assignment. It was exciting. But when when that part of your life changed, how was that to then well, I, not adapt to adapt to not being able to move every few years? Oh, I was afraid to get married to Bruce. He's a farmer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what what about when three years has passed? Am I gonna get itchy feet and want to move again? <laughs> And uh, it turned out that I love both parts of my life, both equally. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful, Jan. Thanks. Sure. sure. Yeah, I'm happy to you, Jan, that, that both ways turned out well for you. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Let us continue with the from the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What petitions do we have this morning to share silently or together in the group? For Mark, Bunny, and Luke. Kathy, Betsy, and Dee. Jean, Terry, and Mike. For Barbara, for Dorothy. For Emma. And Kim, for Ed and Trish, for people fighting for justice, those who struggle, those suffering from the effects of COVID-19, and for what are we particularly thankful today? I know a good outcome from my daughter Leslie's surgery yesterday. Good. I'm thankful for the men who are, and women, who are pitching in to paint the church. Ooh. I'm very impressed with that. That's huge. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> the medical workers. I'm thankful for medical workers. And we just got news that George has been in the hospital since Tuesday and he's coming home today. So mm. great. Yay. Great. Thankful for this day. Thankful for this community. St. Andrews. Let us pray. You're hanging on the cross, declaring God's love to us. You are forgiveness. Beside you hangs a thief. Beneath you waits Mary the forgiven. And all around watch those many people to whom you give new life and hope. To us you give new life and hope. Forgiven sinners become the body and your church. May the reconciliation we share bring your gospel to all the world. Eternal God, by your power we are created and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, give ourselves to your service, and live this day in love to one another and to you. Jesus, you knew rejection and disappointment. Your work seems distasteful. Help us to decide what best to do, what next to do, or what to do at all. Courage and cheerfulness to go the second mile and all the miles ahead. This we pray in Christ's name together. Amen. 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 Well, Jan, I had 